The time is now. Time to update your buyer and seller presentations for success in a post-NAR settlement world. Join us today on the Wandering But Not Lost podcast. And now your host, Jen O'Brien and Matt Emerson. Well, welcome everyone to the WBNL Wandering But Not Lost podcast, where together we align, connect, and prosper. It's going to be a good follow-up uh, episode today. We talked about this a while back when that whole mess of that lawsuit kind of was was kind of getting settled, kind of. Let's put, let's put the settled in air quotes, won't we, Jan? Because you'll talk yeah. about that a little bit more. Um, but uh, things are starting to happen now, so we're going to talk about it over, uh, today. And then we have a panel lined up. For oh, wow. August twenty, uh, well, the panel's on August twenty third. We won't we won't drop it to the weekend after or the week after that. But we have a great panel of uh, brokers that are going to come on and discuss what's happening in their area. So uh, today we're going to focus on Nevada and Jan, uh, where Jan has her expertise. And that's important because it's definitely going to be the technical part about paperwork and so forth could be different in your area. So I'm going to cover today, you know, what I'm doing, what we're doing here, and. As I kind of predicted, it took all the leaders and the powers that be in these various MLSs and local and state associations forever to come up with something. It's so crazy. I mean, we just got, as we're sitting here recording this today, it's almost the end of July. Yes, the, the changes aren't, ch aren't, aren't happening effectively until August 17th, meaning that's the date that the NAR has, <clears throat> excuse me, agreed to do two things. And let's just start with that today. As we've talked about, and hopefully you're up to speed, if you're listening and you're a real estate professional, you hopefully by now know that the two th main things that happened in this settlement with this class action suit that was, uh, that was in, um, I want to say Missouri, is two things. As of August 17th, no MLS can show a co-op all those fields that reference any kind of co-op, uh, paying a buyer's agent's commission, even for rentals, has to be removed by the MLS. That's number one. Number two, it prohibits the, or basically that's a prohibition. The second thing is that if you are a buyer's agent and you're going to work with a buyer before you show them property, as of August 17th, you must be in a written brokerage agreement with them. Very much like listing the buyer. We list the seller. Now we're going to list the buyer, which to me is the easiest way to just adjust to these changes, which is a huge change for a lot of realtors across the country. If you've never used a buyer brokerage agreement, if you've always been using a buyer brokerage agreement, the big change is there's no guarantee you're going to get the commission from the seller because there used to generally always be something, something in the MLS, whatever that number would be. As, as a seller, as a listing agent would used to go out and this is what we used to do and we've done for years and this is what's changing. You go out to take a listing. Now you just are negotiating for your side of the commission only in the listing agreement. There's no sharing of commission through the MLS. That's not to say that a seller can't offer commission to pay the buyer's agent and that'll be a one-off negotiation each time. So we're going to get into the details of that. So remember, those are the two things. There was a lot of misinformation and disinformation mm -hmm. that was pushed out when this came out in the spring. Now you notice that the way uh, news cycles work, we're past that. I think the majority of people don't even know about this when you go out on your point. Some Definitely. people might have heard of it. You're going to have to talk about this. And then you're going to have the people that say, well, it's against the law as a seller. I don't have to pay commission anymore. And you're going to have to deal with that. So we're going to talk about some of those things today, what you should be changing right now and why we're having to change it in Nevada because our local MLS has decided to make these changes effective July 31st. <laughs> so July 31st, there's going to be no... MLS compensation, and we're we are going to have to jump in, and and I guess they're having us go through and work out the kinks between there and August seventeenth is the only thing I'm thinking. Um, and I think that the other thing I want to say is I've been doing some research and talking to people, you know, locally and around the country, even within our own uh, local MLS here in Las Vegas, we've got brokers deciding to do things a little bit differently. So I'm just going to start by saying. Whatever I'm talking about is what's working for me in my company and in my state. And then in my local MLS, whatever is going to work for you, you're going to have to run that by your company, your broker, 
what's going on in your state because definitely the forms are different because I'm licensed in Florida and it's different in Florida than it is in Nevada. The process of how of how they're handling it and what you can and can't do and whether or not concessions, for example, a concession field is going to be in the MLS. And I think why, and I want to start with that before we move into like three things that you should have in your presentation or three stages of your presentation, working with a buyer and a seller. I think that there's a lot of local MLSs and leadership going very conservative on this because there's a big unknown in here. Okay. So NAR has settled with this class action suit for one big, huge reason. So there wouldn't be any more copycat lawsuits that to me is why they went ahead and did this. And it, it got rid of, you know, majority of the people are included in that. There were some companies that were excluded that made over a certain amount of uh, gross sales and those have either settled or they haven't. And there's probably some 30 companies that had to deal with it that weren't included in the settlement. Okay, great. That was one thing, but here's the deal. The DOJ, the department of justice at one point had uh, stopped this investigation and started it again. This has been going on for years, like since 2020, maybe even be before that. But right now, they are still in the mix, meaning the Department of Justice, Justice, I think, is watching to see what's going to happen with the industry, our industry, as we roll out these changes and perhaps are keeping it open so that they can come in and make it stricter. That being said, that's why I feel like you're going to see some, you're going to talk to your friends that are realtors around the country like, oh, we don't have to do that. So for example, our brokerage is sort of taking the stance of, you know, j don't even talk about commission. Let the other side, you know, let the buyer's agent bring it in. Don't don't be in conversations where you're saying we're going to offer. Don't try to find some workaround, like put it on another website. Right. Don't do any of that. So I feel like a lot of companies and uh, MLSs are going to go down that road because nobody wants to be able to have a, a case built up against them to say, you said in good faith you were going to not tell sellers they have to offer compensation, which is what this lawsuit was about, which is not really what we did. We just mm -hmm. always have said, let's negotiate a commission. And we're going to offer half of that out. Okay. So that's a big, huge paradigm shift for everybody right now. Okay. So just be aware of that. So let's talk about three areas of your, when you work with buyers and sellers, hopefully we're all already doing this. Okay. So there's three stages, if you will, there's building trust, which is in your initial conversation and phone call where you're setting up an appointment. That's the goal of that. Number two is you got to show your value. And we're going to talk about like we do in the, our sales builder program. We believe in doing a pre pre listing. I'm just going to call it a pre presentation, a pre presentation email, very professional to show your value, a packet that you send to your buyer and seller to confirm the time you're meeting and to give them some information. I'm going to go through what you should be in that. And then you set expectations when you actually meet with your buyer or seller. And here's where you're going to have to dig into the details of what's changed. Okay. So we're going to go through these one, two, threes, and I'll break them down and talk about uh, the basics of it. And then we'll just kind of get into maybe a little bit about how to deal with the, these changes with your, with the buyer and with the seller. So number one, build trust. This is your initial contact, your initial call. What's the purpose of a call, everybody? We're going back to basics here. It's not to give your whole full presentation. It's not to discuss commission. It's to get the information. What is their information? Like, who are they? How do you contact them? What's their email? What's their time frame and motivation? Just a little bit. You're trying to, maybe they called you. That's what happens to us, luckily. They called you. Maybe you're following up with a lead. And they're, they're saying, hey, I'm interested in buying a house in your area. Great. Let me get some basic information. What's your time frame? Why are you moving to the Las Vegas area? Where are you in the process right now? Like, have you already been talking to other real estate agents? This is going to be important. Always has been important because now you're, you're going to only want to work with people who are committed to working with you. And they're going to commit to work with you if you follow this process where they feel like they can trust you and you can show your value, right? What are their basic wants and needs? Have they, are they clear about where they want to live? Do they know what they're looking They may know what they're looking for in a house, but why they're reaching out to you is they don't know the areas if they're not from your area, right? And then you want to schedule an appointment to meet. Boom, that's it. That's your first call. There's an opportunity for you to show your experience and your professionalism. And then you follow that up very quickly, you know, within a day or so, maybe the same day, you show your value because you already have this ready, what I'm going to walk you through a pre-presentation and email and just have a, a template made. 
So it was like, hey, Matt, it was great talking to you. This is to confirm that we're meeting at our office located at this address. Click here for directions on this date and time. Okay. Then my recommendation is to put a couple videos, hey, to, to make this a real powerful meeting and answer a lot of questions that our clients have. We've right. prepared these videos for you and just have these videos, just record these videos. They could be simple videos that you might, maybe you already have on social media or if not, and you're not using videos, um, maybe you should start using videos, number, yeah. number one, or put this information into like a sheet or something that is some frequently asked questions if you're afraid of doing videos. So it could be everything from steps in buying a home here in our local area, you know, so steps in buying a Las Vegas home is one we have. You know, what are buyer closing costs when you're buying a home here in our area? Uh, we have one that's like, um, you don't have to overwhelm them with them. I'm just giving you some ideas. Uh, what are the, people always ask, how much money do I have to come in? How much money am I going to have to come in with up front? We've got a video that talks about earnest money and deposit and having to pay for an inspection and maybe a credit report and then how the rest of it comes into closing costs, right? So, um, it, you know, it, you can, I wouldn't, you could if you wanted to, which is what I'm about to consider now work this out in the next few weeks as it's the end of July. Uh, buyer agent compensation, ways we are paid. Once everybody knows that they have to work with an agent and sign a contract, and maybe it's you're, you know, you're comfortable talking about, we'll talk more about this, but this is the way we, I haven't decided if I want to put that in this initial email or not, but that could be buyer's agent compensation, ways we can get paid, how we're going to work on your behalf. Okay. And then I think you need some kind of like home buyer's guide, which could be basically a lot of those things I just mentioned. So maybe you have a couple videos highlighting the key things that they need to know, which again, shows your value and your professionalism. And then you kind of have your, uh, you could have your little buyer presentation, which is what I'm going to talk about next. So they could review it. And we're, and it's kind of like a listing presentation. We always had a buyer consultation, right, Matt? We've always taught that. Absolutely. Um, and now, now you're going to have a few more things in it. So you might as well go ahead and start thinking about a video on explaining how compensation is paid, which would get them thinking about it. So when you meet, it's like they've, if they've looked at it, they're a little bit prepared. They may have more questions, but Hey, you're now taking them down to step three, which is setting the expectation in the consultation where you're meeting them in person, or maybe you're meeting them via zoom to get their commitment. Cause they're coming in into town next week or the week after as a buyer, for example, and you need to go ahead and send out that buyer agreement. Okay. So in this phase, set an agenda, make it a professional meeting. Okay. Hey, Matt, it was great. It was great talking to you. Did you get a chance to review any of the documents I sent you? So you can get a sense of you're going to, how much, how far you're going to have to go in. You have to start from the beginning or did they get a lot of the basics covered? I always like to find out if they've purchased a home or not before. And if they have, because a couple things, if they're first time home buyer, lots of education, yeah. lots of patience and consultation and, and educating. That's what people want, coaching people through the process, even if they have bought homes before. And if they have, they may not have bought a home in your area, which could be completely different. They might have used attorneys back east, or they might have had different things that were common in the area that they purchased. So, you know, just be aware of that. So here's what we're doing in this agenda. In the agenda right away, we're going to confirm what we already found out in our initial conversation. Is anything changed? And we could dig deeper into the details there. This is where you can really get into the home buying process and you should have a slide in there. There's lots of great, you know, things from that everybody has that just basically is the flow chart, right? Mm -hmm. It's the, the, the roadmap to buyers, to working with, a buy, with an agent to buy a home. You need to have that type of thing in there. You need to talk about the market. So have something that's going to trigger you in your presentation. Let's talk about what's happening in the market. That's where your professionalism and your expertise comes into what's going on right now. It's a great opportunity to say, let's share with you a couple recent scenarios that we had, success stories. And I love this part of the presentation where you can add maybe three or four recent sales. You don't have to put the specifics in like the address in this. You can just have, you know, this property, maybe a picture of it. It can have an address or whatever, but it could, it's going to say, what did you do for that buyer? Meaning we got them this interest rate. We negotiated these closing costs. You know, th that's where you're going to start seeing how you're going to show in your 
recent transactions, how hard you work for your client. Yep. Okay. I think that's so powerful. A little bit about why hire us. That's where you could have testimonials in addition to just your backstory, a little bit about you. So they know that if they haven't already Googled you and that's going, now you, you're going to go do all of this. You're going to spend a lot of time on what are you looking for? You know, what we do is let's go pull up a map of the city. Let's go into the MLS and start putting in the information of what you're looking for and start showing you some examples. You know, uh, let's go look at the new homes and then let's line up a tour. You know, if we're not going to go tour today and we're just meeting to get the clarification, which is what happens with us. A lot of people want to have this whole, we really want to understand the process. Then we'll go, uh, we'll go schedule some time to, with you to go look at houses. And what we do is go through this and then we follow it up with a very detailed, here's everything based on what we talked about. And this works with, obviously, if we're via Zoom and said, why don't you look through this list of all these properties so you can tell us which ones you want to go look at, right? That's where you're going to be able to get, you know that you're going to follow up with that, but here's where in this presentation, you're going to be able to set up the agreement, reviewing the paperwork, just like you would at a listing presentation. Right. We're at the end of the listing presentation and I'm Mr. and Mrs. Seller. If you're ready to move forward, why don't we go through the paperwork right now and I'll tell you what we're going to do next so I can get your house on the market. Now it's going to be Mr. and Mrs. Buyer. Let's review the paperwork. As I've mentioned earlier, uh, you know, every real estate agent is required now. Every realtor is required to have a buyer brokerage agreement, which outlines how we're compensated. So I'm going to take you through that process right now, the various ways that we can negotiate either getting that compensation paid by the seller or how we're going to put the transaction together for you. So let's go through that right now. Okay. Hey, Jim, talk about, talk about the importance of having that conversation and getting that agreement signed up front, because my gut is telling me that agents are still going to be taking people out without that written uh, agreement and thinking in their head, I'm going to build more trust while I'm showing homes and I'll get them to yeah. sign before they do it. Cause don't you think that's going to happen? Yeah. And honestly, this is where there's confusion in different markets where some brokers and places may be allowing a showing, um, right. you know, a showing thing, you know, a, 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 like Zillow came out with that touring agreement. Here's where the problem is that NAR settlement says before it's very clear before showing any homes, you must enter into an agreement. And so I think they're trying to say like, that's an agreement, but it has to address how you're compensated. Right. So that Zillow showing touring thing address doesn't address how you're compensated it put a, a line in there that said if you're going to move forward with me, with me after this this is what you're talking about matt yeah like let's, exactly let's, let's get you to warm up to me and we'll go show a few things but i don't think it meets the test of the nar settlement meaning the zillow thing basically says we're going to go show you this is a seven day agreement we're going to tour homes if you decide that you want to work with me we're then going to do another agreement where i'll outline the compensation and how i'm paid that to me doesn't meet the test now. And I think that's what there's confusion about this. Yeah. And I think so, it's gonna, it'll be interesting to watch how this washes out because the buyer brokerage representation agreement is what they've decided to call it in our neck of the woods. Hmm. Um, it very clearly has a paragraph that says you have to put in what your compensation is. So let me, let me um, come back to that because I'm going to talk first about what you have to put in your seller presentation. So Got let's it. switch gears and we'll go to the seller right now. And then I'll finish up with the buyer. So the big thing is there should be in all MLSs, new forms, a new listing agreement. There could be some different other related documents that go with that. But in our area for the listings, we definitely have a new listing agreement. And in the biggest change, the only really huge change in there is in our MLS, we had already taken out let me back up. So we've gone through a lot of iterations. We've gone through, you take a listing, you negotiate a commission of X, and then you have to put in what part of X are you going to give to the buyer's agent. Then about a year or so ago, year plus ago, they removed that part. You just negotiated a commission and there was nothing in our at listing agreement saying how much of the co-op do you put in. Now it's basically says, let me just read what ours says so you can see. First of all, I think this is going to be in everybody's everybody's um, uh, new agreements and contracts, big, bold letters, compensation slash commissions are not set by law or by any realtor association. They are fully negotiable. By the way, they've always been negotiable, but that yeah. is what I think NAR is just kind of mandating and everybody, and it's smart. They're fully negotiable. And that's where you've got to get your negotiation shops, you know, 
really squared away and you've got to work on that skill and hone that skill if you're not good at that. Well, of course they're negotiable. This is what we charge. And I'll talk about how we're going to handle that. Um, this commission, people always ask us if it's negotiable and we're like, yeah, this is what it is. And, you know, if you don't want us to do these things, then we'll do that. All right. We've just gotten people to agree to where our commission is. If you want a cheaper commission, that's not us. There's definitely people out there that will do it for less, but they're not going to provide the same services. And that's not us. So it's okay if you don't want us to work for you. Um, this commission is exclusively for the listing broker services and is not subject to sharing. I mean, that's literally what it says in ours. Crazy. Sharing, splitting, or otherwise distributing to any buyer's broker or agent. The seller acknowledges that any commission arrangement with a buyer's broker, if applicable, must be covered by a separate agreement, residential purchase agreement, and is not covered under this listing agreement. So ours is pretty clear. It basically says, I'm coming out. We're negotiating my services and what my fee, my compensation is for providing those services. Here's what I'm going to do. Here's my marketing plan. And oh, by the way, the buyer's agent, um, we're not, we cannot put it in the MLS any longer. That was the big change, as I just mentioned, as we were talking. But be prepared because the purchase agreement yeah. now has a clause that asks you to pay their commission to, the, to, their, to their agent. So then I would go over that and I'll cover that in just a second when I go through the buyer stuff. So you, I think you've just got to have this. I've been thinking a lot about this, Matt, and I feel like it's almost semantics. It's almost yeah. just changing the narrative. And it's basically like this. This is how I think it's all going to play out. I think it's basically can't put it in the MLS anymore. For years and years and years, it was always put into the contract, meaning the buyer came in with an offer that included all the commissions and all the closing costs. So now we're going to have a separation of that. You're negotiating with me, but be prepared 90% of the time, depending on the market. Okay, let me just say that. It's going to be market driven. If we're in an extreme seller's market, then you're going to see the, you know, not necessarily, but for the most part, the deals where the seller doesn't have to pay commission because that agent is getting paid by their buyer are maybe going to net more. It's always going to come down to the net, in my opinion, the terms to the seller and the net. Because sometimes the seller, maybe the seller needs to rent back for a month for free. That's enough to have them pay your commission yeah. on the other side if you're the buyer's agent and you came in at a net a price that gave them a net, that beat the cash deal that didn't want to give you a rent back. Do you see what I'm saying? So every negotiation is going to be specific to what is the goal of that seller and the goal of that buyer and how are you going to negotiate it? Okay. So I think it's just, we're not doing it up front. It's going to be over here negotiated in the offer. It's all going to come out the same way in the end. Okay. Depending on the market. Now, a couple of things with the seller, dual agency. Can you do that? We call it a consent to act here in Nevada. Some States don't allow it. If you do, you need to, I'm just going to throw the questions out. You need to go address this and get the answers for yourself in your area. Can, first of all, you represent both the buyer and seller. And if you can, do you want to? I, I think there's a conflict of interest, but it's going to be interesting because I believe there will be buyers who have bought homes before and they already do it now. So there's going to be buyers going, I'm not paying the commission. I'm going right to the listing agent and I'm going to get a negotiated deal. And I'm, you know, and so that's where you've got to discuss how you're going to disclose this and then what is going to be your negotiation of with the seller when you take the listing you have to address this so if you can do dual agency in your in your city you need to find out are we allow are you allowed in your area in your brokerage to negotiate x percent for the listing side but if our marketing results in a buyer contacting us that's not represented by another agent how do you get compensated are you going to do that for nothing are you going to just do it as, you know, I'm not. So I'm either going to refer it or I'm going to negotiate something. And it's either, you, do you put that in the listing agreement? It's X. If I just represent you, it's Y. If we bring the buyer also because of our marketing, you got to find out if you can do that. Or like currently how our broker just looking at it, like they don't want us to address it. But then I'm talking to another broker who's saying, yeah, we're going to address that. We're going to put that situation in the uh, listing agreement. These are the things that has to be fluid right now until everybody kind of figures out what's the right way to do it. But right now, our, our company is taking a stand. Let the buyer's agent come in and, uh, I mean, not the buyer's agent, 
you would have to come in and ask for the commission. So you still have to talk to them about it. So I think people haven't really thought it through, to be honest. And then what forms are required? Okay, so that's a whole nother animal. And all right, so here's the deal with sellers. Like always, you go through that process. You have to discuss the conditions. You go through your normal listing presentation, talk about what's happening in market conditions. I think you not, you must, must, must talk about concessions and closing costs, especially if as we move into this period, you know, as we get started with it, you know how, because you were using it, hopefully, in all your CMAs, which you're not going to be able to know right now, because in our market, they are not going to put in the sold area concessions, which I think is a mistake, and I bet that will change. It's going to hurt appraisals. Now, what I mean is when you close a deal as a listing agent, you have to fill that area out, right, that says, what did when did it close? What was the condition? Were there any seller concessions? And what was the price? Well, appraisers pull that up and they put it specifically in their appraisals to go, that comp sold for 400, but they gave 20,000 in concessions. Now, yeah. we're being told that is not going to be in our MLS. So now what do appraisers do? They're winging it. I mean, do you see, I mean, like I'm sitting here going through this and I have gone through this presentation, what we're going to do for this podcast, and there's still unanswered questions. And this is very frustrating. Okay. Yeah. So anyway, that is going to be interesting. But right now, you know, you can have a conversation that says, look, in the last year, 50% or 60% of every sale had some concession in it. And up until this point in our MLS, 99% of every seller selling a house was offering some kind of commission. I don't think that's going to change overnight. It's just how it is asked for is what's changing. Right. It's going to be in the offer. So we need to be prepared for it. So let me show you a net sheet, you know, of we'll deal with the net sheet. I always do a net sheet and I do what I think the house is going to sell for. And then I say, not, I never do it at the list price unless list price is below market. I do it for what I think. I'm telling them that I think it's going to sell for. But now what I'm going to do is say, we could maybe go, here's one with, here's one where maybe they come in and we negotiate the list price. Right. And that's because this is where the difference is. If you do a net sheet that's about two and a half to 3% below the list price, and then you do a net sheet at list price with the commission, guess what the net is going to be? About the same. Yeah. So that's setting the seller up to understand it can, it's, if it's about, if, it, if net is what's important to you, then let us negotiate that on, on behalf of you. If you have somebody that's like, I, the law says I don't have to pay a commission, you got to clear it up. That's not what it says. It says that you, you can't put in the MLS and advertise that you're, uh, we can't share commission anymore. It's on the buyer's agent to come in and negotiate that and ask for it and put it into their offer in some way that benefits you. Our job is to make sure it benefits you. So that's what we're going to do, right? So you have to have the conversation with them and have them prepared and don't get in the mindset that no one is ever going to ask you for that. Right now in our market, homes aren't all selling off the shelf. Once they do, it's a different story. But right now, people are going to ask for commission, Mr. and Mrs. Seller. So why don't we deal with that when we cross that bridge? And if, if you get a, a seller that goes, I don't, I'm not going to do it, I don't care, I guess you're going to have to decide if you want to work with them because you're going to counter it out and you're going to counter it out. And then people are not going to buy the house. And eventually they, here's what happens and they don't see it. They eventually get it sold, but not at the price that they would have had they just been a little bit more open to getting a lot of offers and negotiating it. Right. So mm -hmm. anyway, you've got to talk about that. It could be you pay for it. You pay a part. I mean, it could be that they ask for it. We counter it out. They have an agreement with their buyers, aid, with their buyer. Maybe it's a combination thereof. A part comes from them. A part comes from you or the buyer pays their agent. But if the buyer pays their agent, Mr. Seller, this I'm just trying to help you see how I'm going to discuss it. If a buyer is going to have to pay their agent, whatever, two and a half, three percent, whatever the number is that they negotiate, they're probably going to make that up in the offer to you. That's why I showed you these two net sheets. See, that's that's the, that's the thing we're going to have to get comfortable just helping people. And I think the thing that always works is get away from the principal and get to the bottom line. Absolutely. Preach. What's the bottom line? There are people who are hung up on, I'm not going to do it because I don't want to do it or I don't have to do it. That's in my mindset. And if I lose money over it, I'm okay with that. There's not much you can do for that person. But if you can help someone in a positive way, say, what are your goals? Ask them straight up. Seller, what's your, what are your goals? Are you wanting the quickest sale? Or okay, then maybe you're not going to get as much money because 
You want the quickest sale because that is the most important thing. We cannot be up here testing the market. That's right. Okay. What do you want? You want you want the most money? This is the process that we have to follow, and we've got to be competitive. And you got to allow me to negotiate for you. You know? Do you want these other terms? Well, I'm going to do these things, and I'm going to let the other agents know that these are the best terms that are going to help. You know, if you give me the permission, then we'll try to get those kind of offers for you. Okay. So focus on their goals and then always do a net sheet. And that is the way it's all going to work out. Listen, I feel it's all going to be fine. I just think we're going to go through that awkward time where everybody's trying to figure it out. Just like when we had to start doing short sales, just like when all of a sudden there were so many uh, offers and nobody knew how to do multiple counter offers. We're going through a paradigm shift. Okay. A huge paradigm shift of how we do things. All right. Last thing, let's talk about what kind of, how to do it in the buyer presentation. So again, form, you're going to have some forms. We have a new buyer brokerage representation agreement, the BBRA. Okay. The key things that are going to be in any brokerage agreement, whether it's a listing or a buyer is going to be, it has to be a time frame. So you can put it in for as long as you want, right? It's whatever you agree to. It could be six months. It could be a month. It could be for the two weeks that you're here, you know, whatever. Our brokerage agreement has a little bit about what they're looking for and then areas. So you can go general areas, even has a place to list properties. You know, do you, are you going to go show them certain properties? So there's a, it's a multiple ways to use this form. You're going to use it based on your circumstance. Now, the big thing, of course, is there is a commission amount clause and it's just either going to be a percentage or a flat fee our brokerage right now is not allowing any kind of hourly or advanced fees there's none of that in the brokerage agreement it's basically a percentage or a flat fee and there's a statement in there that says you cannot receive any amount higher than what you negotiate with the buyer that's important that was part of the settlement it was basically you before you start working with a buyer, you must have a written agreement that outlines how you're compensated, what you're compensated, the, the amount you're compensated, and it can't be higher later. Does it can go lower, but you can't say it's two and then accept a three. That's a problem. So you know, do it accordingly. Um, and then there was a clause in our brokerage agreement just to help you understand if you haven't seen yours yet. That says this, which which is telling the buyer, I can do this if you tell me you want me to negotiate on your behalf. So it's collecting broker's fee from the seller. Buyer may choose to negotiate that the broker fee be paid in whole or in part by the seller as a credit to buyer at closing and or by the seller directly to the broker. At a uh, buyer's instruction, broker will include either or both of these in the buyer's offer to purchase a property. Okay. Buyer will help buyer negotiate these with the seller. Broker will not retain any amount from any source that exceeds the amount agreed upon. So it's in there twice. Okay. So very crazy. And then last thing here is going through how you can be compensated. So now you're in this part of the presentation with the buyer. You've gone over, um, you're, you're going through the form with them. And you get to that part where the compensation is and you can read, I would read that right out loud and basically say, there are a couple ways we can do this. You can instruct me that will always ask, let me show you the, let me show you the purchase agreement where it is right here. And in our purchase agreement on page two, this -hmm. is what it says, buyer representative broker compensation at the close of escrow or the exchange of the subject property, seller shall pay the buyer's representative buyer's broker, um, blank percent of the grace of the gross sales price of the property or a flat amount. There it is. That's all it is. It's very simple. It's basically seller agrees to pay X to the buyer's agent at close of escrow. So the buyer could pay a difference, right? So you could negotiate and you're going to come in and, you know, I think most buyers, unless they're really wanting to get a competitive offer and they have the cash to pay, you are going to say, let's see if we can get it. You sure. And if we're going to get it, we're not, this is where you have to go. We're not going to get 20000 off the list price and get your closing costs paid for and get my compensation paid for. So let's talk about it. What do you want to do? And that story, that conversation is dependent on what's happening right now in your market. And further, what's happening on that property in your market right now? Because your market might be 60 days to get a property sold, but this house is a hot property and everybody wants it. And there's multiple offers. Now it's a completely different discussion with your buyer. Okay. So 
I mean, it, 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 to me, it's common sense. It's a little scary for people because maybe we've just all been lulled, and we have uh, all these years. You never had to worry about your buyer having to pay you unless you did in your market because of the way the MLS and the way the Association of Realtors for years and years and years have run this model. That is disappearing, and that's what's freaking people out. And I just think it's a mindset shift. I really do. Then obviously the buyer could pay all the commission. Okay. Um, last couple of things that are another, you know, not to end with more questions, but it is what it is. We'll, we'll keep on reporting it. Here's some good news. We do know that um, Fannie, Fannie and Freddie came out back in like April, like after all this announcement and, and, and basically said to everybody, we are aware of the settlement and we are stating that if a seller chooses to pay a buyer's agent commission, that will not count towards the closing cost concession based on the kind of loan that um, the buyer is doing. So, for example, depending on how much they put down, it could be four or five, six percent seller concession on a conventional loan. Um, if, if, if you're trying to get that for your buyer and get your compensation paid, your compensation is not included in that uh, four or five or six percent. That's good news for us. The, the VA and FHA, FHA and VA haven't come out and said the same thing. VA did come out and say, however, they are temporarily changing the rule that says buyers cannot pay any commissions because forever you couldn't charge a transaction fee. Now VA buyers can pay commissions. So that's a movement in the right direction. And the biggest thing that's ultimately, I believe, going to happen, I feel, I think it will as, as things roll out and the various government programs and stuff start realizing that there are certain groups of people who are really maybe struggling more and it's the people that never can buy homes, okay, <laughs> because they don't have as much assets or they don't have as much, you know, down payment. I think that we'll see that there might be a way lenders will allow federally backed loans and stuff will allow the financing of a commission or a portion of the commission. And that might be what people are willing to do, uh, you know, to be able to purchase a home, you know, for now, if it gets them into the house and the conditions are right, that it can create, you know, a value and appreciate and so forth and build their wealth. Right. So anyway, that's where we're at. Uh, I feel like there's a few unanswered questions, but I'm not worried about it. We're going to figure it out as we go. And by the time we have our panel in mid uh, end of what third week of August, right. Um, then I think we'll have, uh, I think we're getting some information from California we're trying to get a Texas broker on board with us. We already have a Colorado broker oh, on board no. with us, right? right. And you'll right. have maybe, you know, um, my insight on here in Nevada, but it'd be great to talk to those bigger, other big states. We're looking for states. I, I don't know if I have somebody in Florida that we can do it, or I can get the information for Florida and share that as well, because I'm going to some seminars on that and the forms are completely different and we can get into a whole different discussion on um, they do agency different in Florida. So yeah, anyway, so that's it. I, I, what you were talking about, Jan, it really is semantics, right? Cause it really not, I mean, it, cutting away, you know, some of the little details, like obviously the MLS thing is huge, right? That's a big change for realtors anyway. Um, but really it all is the same thing. When I first got into real estate, we were trained that the buyers, the buyers are the one that pays the commission in the first place. You know what I mean? Cause the buyers are the one that's bringing money in for crying out loud. And that's you know, how I feel. I still feel know, to this day. That's it. It's just so funny that, you know, you just have to get your head right into that. The buyer's agent, the buyer really is the one that's got a little bit of power there. So I don't know. It's just, you just had to reframe it. And it it's going to be that. interesting. You know, it, look, everything's market dependent and we're not yeah. in the market yet. And I honestly feel even if interest rates come down, which they will eventually, who's maybe September, the rates, you know, the Fed is kind of inching at that. We're in this crazy political um, election year. But whatever happens, if the if and when the rates get closer to six and they're hovering at six point eight to seven for a year plus now, but if they get back into six, that's a mindset thing, and that is like a thing people are waiting for. I saw Barbara Corcoran do an interview, and I and I'm like, I said the same thing, Barbara. You know, I'm just not as uh, as uh, well known as you. She said the same thing. You know, people in their mind are waiting on six. We're going to see a just all this pent up buyer demand jump into the market, which is going to bring prices up because she said, and I agree, I don't think there'll be enough inventory to absorb the amount of people that are going to come onto the market. Right. So prices aren't going down. They're going to go up when the interest rates come down. The only time we get into a place. So this is where 
this is not great for buyers who aren't in a position to be able to negotiate paying for their buyer's agent. So we're saying we might have to sit down with people and we're consulting a first time home buyer and say, you may need to go ahead. The market has shifted. Now you need money for your down payment. You can get a gift letter. Here's all the ways that you can do it. Or you need to save some more money because to be able to be competitive, since you can't finance your commission yet, we can't work for free. We're going to really get, you know, this is how we work. Look at how we get people into homes. If you want us to represent you through this scary process, then this is our commission and you're going to have to be able to pay it. Right. So that's a tough conversation to have with people, but it's real, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, let me help you get real about how now I don't think that's the case right now. I think we are going to all day long get compensation from the seller right now in our market, unless the house right now we're losing homes because of better our cash deals or something, because it's a beautiful home. It's priced right. And it's updated. That's not one you were going to get. You know, because of, of, of the because you're asking for closing costs, you can't buy a house unless you get the seller to pay closing costs. So everything is going to be very super dependent on your buyer and the market and the situation and the motivation of the seller, like it always has been. Again, I'm just saying, get your mind around. It's not over here in the MLS. It's not a guarantee of anything because that's what it was. If they had a number in there. They couldn't change that because you could take them to the board and get your money sure. if they somehow changed it. So now we don't have that guarantee. The guarantee comes because you qualify, you go through the process we talked about today, you choose to work with someone, you do that to see if the people are wanting to work with you and you want to work with them and you move forward and you sign an agreement. So you're only working with motivated people who have the ability to purchase and are ready to make a decision. Otherwise, say, hey, let me just continue to consult with you, keep you in my newsletter. And when the time's right, after you do these things, you've talked to our lender, we'll be ready to help you. Moving on. That's what I think you have to do. It'll so. be interesting to see how it's covered in the news as well, because- um, Or will it even be covered? Well, that's the whole thing, right? It, this might have already had its day in the sun as far as coverage goes, right? But if it gets back in there and it gets back into this crazy conversation that realtors make too much money and all of that kind of stuff starts start circling back around, it'll, you know, it'll, that once again, that will come and go. Um, but it'll be another conversation that has to be had. And it goes back to proving your value and, and showing what you're bringing to the table to get that house sold at the highest price, right? So, Which it always has been. And I know this has sure. been long, but I've got one other last comment because this is always true. Do I think that overall commissions have been having a downward pressure for years? Right. You know, I joke and say when I first got in the business and our brokerage, we had a 7% listing. Yep. That's just what I learned. And that's pretty much we got most of the time, you know, and we would maybe offer three and keep four, for example. I, I don't know. It's the last time I even heard of a 7% commission. So over the years, commissions have had a downward pressure. And we're, you know, the news was reporting 6% commissions are gone. And I'm like, you know, that's it. You guys haven't done your homework. That's not the average commission. If you were trying to say there's a set commission, which there isn't, everybody always negotiated whatever their commission was. And we just got out there and we went and we all just, you know, each person individually said, this is what it is. And it happened to be similar. It ranged somewhere between some people did 1% on the listing yeah, side that's right. to, you know, three or 4% on the listing side. So the, the thing I'm saying is, do I think we'll we'll see people do it for less buyers, agents who don't know how to do listings and who are a little afraid? Yeah, I think there's going to be people discounting themselves, but I don't think it's the majority. So the point I'm trying to make is there'll be people who are getting out of the business. It's already happening going this. I, I can't deal with this. This is not this is too hard, which just means less competition for you as an agent means if you're good at what you're doing and you just focus on your niche and what you're, you're going to be fine. Don't worry about all the other people. Um, you go out and you believe in what you're doing. The people are go the people who are going to do well in this business and do even better than they ever have are the ones that are confident and the ones that have what we just talked about today. If you've been a realtor that is a hobbyist and you've been winging it and you never really got into showing your value, this is going to be hard for you. So there you go. Become a student of the net sheet. Right. Yeah, be on the side of the being the professional. And That's if you're a hobbyist, right. you know, maybe just go put it in part time status and get a referral and get it to somebody you know, that's going to be able to handle these changes. Okay. I mean, I know some, I kind of sound like I'm being a little mean, but I'm like, it's, it's going to separate yeah. the, the people who know what they're doing and the people Absolutely. that don't, because what I'm trying to say is the old way, 
allowed part of what I think is the problem we've had in the industry. People who really didn't know what they were doing or weren't trained or joined a company that didn't really help them or they didn't really care to go get help and they still yeah. got paid. They yeah. still got paid. Those people are not nec- are going to say, well, I don't know how to do this. I need to get out or I'll do it for a, 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 you know, a percentage a lot less than everyone else because I don't know how to, because I don't, I don't see my value. There'll be a little of that, but that'll go away too. Anyway, will, can, I've been rambling enough today. Thank you. <laughs> all right. All good. You can get all this information over on our show notes at wbnlpodcast.com. This is an episode two, excuse me, 302. Um, we'll have all the information we talked about in here, plus links to some other things. And, you know, I think, Jan, I'm going to go back to, I forgot which course. It's in our uh, sales builder course. We have the flow of a buyer and a flow of a seller. And it's really detailed with all the different steps that uh, you go through with your, your clients. I'll put those, that, uh, those images in the show notes as well. Uh, just if, you know, to give you some uh, uh, something to look at and reference to add to your value if you're looking through our show notes there. So that's over at wbnlpodcast.com, episode 302. We do have that panel coming up. Let me find the date for that. Talk amongst yourself. Let me grab it. Yeah, and, when, and honestly, we will be updating our sales builder um, to add a, a lesson once I kind of get that. Because we do have in our, we do have in our, um, downloads in sales builder a right. listing presentation pre-listing presentation buyer consultation we'll be updating that and i'll probably be you know recording soon as soon I want to wait until all the little last minute things weigh out and then the coming and there'll months be, there'll be a lot yeah, of those there'll be changes so we'll once i have that and we've gone a couple months with the change we'll update the sales builder and we'll let you know back here that we've Absolutely. done that. And that uh, panel presentation will actually drop on Tuesday, August 27th. So that's the okay. date you can put in your calendar to uh, watch the panel. Um, Jan, I want to talk about that. Maybe we should do that live. Let's check that out. Let's talk about that. Okay. Oh, let's I love it. About. That'd be Ooh. kind of fun. Huh? So let's, 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 let's discuss that over the next right. 30 days. I uh, love it. Uh, if you are a um, uh, looking, if you're a broker, a team leader, or um, you know, own a uh, or, or looking for a way to train agents that work under under you, we still have our July summer special running on our real estate sales builder certification course. If you go over to wbnlcoaching.com, uh, you can use coupon code RSBC24 and you get 20% off, I think it's 20% off, 20% off of the price of the real estate sales builder certification course that runs until July 31st, so right around the corner. The same time that they're taking the um, commission off of the MLS in Nevada. So <laughs> there you right, go. Very good. So go check that out. All right, anything else, Jenna Brian? That's it. All righty, everyone. Be forever wandering, but not lost. Oh, there we Cheers. go. Cheers, Jan O'Brien. Cheers, Matt Emerson.